Welcome back to the channel. Our painting gnome got our 2020 Acura RDX A-Spec all painted. It's all blue. So let's throw it all back together and get it out on the road. We'll start off with the headlights because they're big, they're expensive, and they happen to be at the top of the pile. So we'll get them out of the way and stick them in the car. This side we'll plug it in and clip it in. We'll put our bumper bracket on because one of our headlight bolts goes through it. And tighten our headlight down. Clip in our rubber baby buggy bumper. And we'll set our other headlight in here. A couple of tabs that slide into the fender. And then one on the back that locks it in. Put all of our bolts in. Now we'll put our new bracket on our fender. And run our last bolt in there. Make sure our gap is nice. There is a tiny bit of adjustment on there. Clip in that last rubber baby buggy bumper. And we're gonna put our belt molding on our rear door. Just clips in. And we'll put our door handle on. First we have to put the gaskets on. The little tabs that clip in on each side. We'll feed the wire through for the handle. Clip the front of it in. Slide it forward and lock it in. We'll put our cap on the back. Make sure it's all the way in there. Then we'll tighten it down. I don't know if we'll get it as tight as the factory. I'm no Hercules. And that's who tightened it the last time. Put our gasket on the back of the door. And we can put our door panel on. I already pulled the water barrier down a little bit and plugged in that door handle. I didn't forget. And I know I did that because it works. We clipped our handle in the door and plugged in all of our wires. And now we can smash our door panel onto the door. And put our screws in the door handle and one in the grab handle. Tuck a little cover down there and put our cap behind our door handle. Look at that, Mr. Spotty showed up. The build must be almost finished. Maybe with this little gasket at the bottom. Just clips in and then clips under the east the bottom of the door. Now we'll put the door handle in the front because I'm tired of trying to reach in there and open the door. Clip our gaskets on each side. We'll feed the wire through. Clip the front of the door handle in and slide the back in. Put our cap on. You have to pull out on the door handle a little bit to get it to slide in there. And now we can tighten it down. 6,000 foot pounds. And put our little cap on. We're going to reach in here and plug that door handle in. Proof I at least did this one. I'll have to take my word that the back door does work. Plug our lock I actuator back in. Put the harness in. I just left that out so that I could get that water barrier down and it wasn't in our way. I'm going to put our rear molding on here. It's just held on with two-sided tape. So we just pulled the backing off and threw it on the floor for the shop sea turtles. And we're going to stick it on there. I covered it in masking tape because I had it sitting on that face when I was cleaning the tape off and I didn't want to scratch it up. We're going to put our top molding on, also held on by two-sided tape, and it kind of clips around the metal. So we'll snap it in there. This is a brand new molding. I splurged. I wasn't sure if I could get the old one off without destroying it, so I didn't want to find out the hard way. I went ahead and got one. Turns out I was able to save the original one. So now I have an extra for the next one. As if the two-sided tape and being clipped onto the metal wasn't enough, they put a screw in the back. So we'll tighten that down. And we'll put our window channel back in. Tuck in the corner first, then clip it in all the way down. And then across the top. Make sure it's not folded over. We can put our belt molding on, snap it in there, 
and use the belt molding installation tool to fully install it. Now we're going to install our ridiculously expensive rear view mirror, direct from Honda, complete with all the packaging. It was still cheaper than a used mirror. Salvage yards are pretty proud of their mirrors. Apparently they feel you should pay a premium for the road testing service they offer on all of their used parts. It even came in the right color. Can't go wrong. Hopefully we painted the car the right color to match the mirror. Get it clipped in there. And put our bolts in. And peel our paint code sticker off the glass. Now we can put our door gasket in. Put it in all the way around. So we get to our door check, we gotta pull it off of our A-pillar. We can sneak the gasket around the other side and we'll bolt our door check back in and continue clipping. So we get to the top, on the top you push in on one side and then push down on the gasket and it'll clip into the channel. Usually you get halfway around the door and realize that you missed one of the channels of about an inch in length and then the gasket just falls right off and you have to start over. It happens to me all the time. And we can put our window trim around the opening of our window, put in our blind spot monitor light, snap it into the door, flip it around the metal, and pull our gasket out that's stuck underneath. Now we're ready to put our door panel on. We'll plug it all in, slide our handle in there, set it up on the door, and clip it in there. We probably could have put that R dot sticker in a little bit better spot so it didn't show underneath the door panel. Oh well. Somebody's been here before. We'll put all our screws back in. Two behind the handle, one under the grab handle. Got some old mirror parts we left laying in there. Make sure our lock works and our handle. And we're out of screws, so our doors must be together. What am I going to have in the center console? Now we got to make sure our door opens and closes like it should. It does have some extra weight on it now, so if it hangs, I will not be surprised, but it seems to close pretty well. So no additional adjustment is needed. Now we can strip down our old hood. We'll start with the washer nozzles and hoses. Pull the hose apart. We'll leave the hose on the back of the nozzle. We'll pull this one off. We need to pop this clip off because it's not going to fit between the two panels. And hopefully we won't stab ourselves in the finger. Pull our rubber baby buggy bumpers off the front. We'll slip our washer hoses and nozzles back in here. Flip in the nozzles. And put our little clip in there and put our hose back in it. And the bumpers just push in, but it helps if you give them a little twist. They pop in. We'll feed our other washer hose up there. We got it close. We're gonna need to go fishing. So we got a pick, we'll grab that hose and pull it out of there. Plug it into our little Y and clip that into the hood. And plug our feed line into the other end and clip this hose up behind the tab. Let me put our stickers on. I was able to save this one off the original hood. Just heat it up a little bit. I'd cut the outside of the skin off so I could get the front gasket off. And since it was off, I could heat the back of it real easy. This sticker, I just went ahead and bought a new one because, believe it or not, it only cost a dollar. You know, like it should. Now we can put our front gasket on. These clips are not very friendly, that's why I cut the skin off, just to be able to get to the back of the clips and squeeze them, otherwise you will break every one of them. We'll tuck our hood liner and the tabs in the back, and then push the push pins in. These are pretty sorry hood liners, they don't last very long. They collect all the water and stretch and they look horrible. And they're also on back order, that's probably why people are constantly replacing them. And we can put our cow screen extension in there and plug in our passenger headlight that we didn't plug in before because it's easy to get to later. 
and maybe I forgot. Put our call screen extension on the other side. Flip it in underneath the fender, next to the windshield. And then put our little push pin up in the front. I've been dreading this part for a while. This is our little gasket that goes up in front of the door. It closes up that gap. In order to get it in here, we need to loosen up our hinges. The top, we loosen up almost until it's all the way out and then work your way down. The bottom one, I just loosen up a little bit. I loosen them up on the door side so that the self-aligning bolts will line itself back up. Now we're just gonna slide that thing up between the hinges and the door. Slowly. And then we're gonna push our little push pins in there. Somewhere right behind the hinge. Nice and convenient. Once we got them all in there, our gasket's stuck to the door. Let me go ahead and tighten up our door hinges. We'll start with the top, snug it up, and we'll work our way down. Hopefully it lines itself back up. And make sure it still closes nicely. So I already took all the pieces off of our other bumper and I save you the footage of me struggling for a while. And the problem is this piece, these two little clips right here clip into the bumper, not a problem. The problem is this piece clips on after it and those clips are underneath it. Actually, this piece goes on first and then this piece. So when it's together, there's no access to those clips because it's actually just like this with a bumper around it. So it's a lot of fun to try to get in there and unclip those without breaking this very expensive plastic piece uh, and not breaking this as well. So after a little struggling, I got it apart. I only had to save one side because the other side, well, the pole broke it before I could. So let's throw a bumper back together. We'll start with our ridiculously expensive grill that I miraculously didn't have to buy for this build. I did already take the emblem off the front because it's a lot easier when the grill is out just to release those tabs and pop it off. It just snaps right back on, but I need it off of there so that I can align the distance sensor for the cruise control after I get a wheel alignment on it. You have to have a wheel alignment first, then align the distance sensor, and then you're good to go. So we have to put it all back together before I can get alignment. So we clipped our grill in, put our push pins in, and there's a few screws that hold it in. Now we're gonna feed the sea turtles a little bit more. We're gonna be eating good today. Now put this lower bumper balance on to give this bumper cover a little bit of support. And it goes that way. Just clips into the tabs on the bottom. Just gotta get it lined up. Snap it in there. We're gonna put the screws in the outside edges, but we're not gonna tighten them all the way up just yet. And we'll put in those push pins. Then we can tighten up the screws. We can put our lower grill in. We left the wiring harness on it. Just line up all the tabs and snap it on there. Like one of those snap together models. Yeah, they put a couple of screws in there just for good measure. Now we got to pull out the clips that we just put in there. We only put them in there so we could line everything up before we tighten up that bolt. Because if we tighten up that bolt ahead of time, it makes it really hard to get those push pins in there. So now we're going to flip this other piece in. Put the screws. And we can put that push pin in that goes through all three pieces. We got a brand new filler for this side since our other one was broken. Put that in there. And put our one screw in the top. And our push pin in the bottom. We got our new molding for the outside. Try and get it out of the plastic bag without breaking it. We got some more food for the shop sea turtles. Just doing my part. They've been hungry since we banned plastic straws in the shop. We can clip in our molding. 
hope we got everything else because this is the piece that's not fun to take out. We'll clip our original molding in the other side. And unfortunately, you have to start with the two evil clips, the ones you can't get to. So you better be sure it's ready to go on. And you clip everything else on. Flip it over, so we can start working on the other side. And start putting our screws in that hold those little pieces on. Drop our fog light in here. And believe it or not, it's held on by a few screws. Plug our harness in and our light. And one last parking sensor. Screw our outer moldings in. Drop our fog light in here that somehow miraculously survived. I'm glad, because it's not cheap. Screw that in, plug our harness in, plug our light in, and one last parking sensor. The dangling plug is the harness that connects for the entire bumper. We put our vents in. Slide underneath the tab, one screw, and a bunch of push pins. I think I got them all. And we got a new one for this side. Slide the front of it in and screw it in. And put all our push pins in there. And the harness does clip into it. Now we can attach our parking bumper detection system to the front of our valance. Just slides in there, clips in. And then tears out when you hit a parking bumper. There's a couple of push pins in it as well. The trap is baited. Now we just wait for the sea turtles to arrive. In the meantime, we'll throw our freshly assembled bumper back on. Start in the center. Set the grill in. Line it up on the brackets on the side and use our bumper installation tool to Clip it in. Make sure we got the clip underneath the headlight engaged. Put all our push pins in across the top of the grill. Close our hood and see if it fits. It should. I didn't do anything up there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our harness for our front bumper. And put the screws in the bottom. There's three in the center that bolt to the radiator support. Put our little moldings on the bottom of our fender. Just clips in. There's a push pin on the bottom. And now everyone's favorite part, the wheel liner installation. If you like wheel liners, there's something wrong with you. Flip it into the front deflector. We'll tuck the front part up here. And we'll work our way around. Part of it goes inside the fender and part of it stays outside. Our push pins in there and our screws. A couple of clips in the back. And then one screw that holds the bumper in to the fender. We got a couple of screws in the bottom. And we'll start putting in some of those push pins that we left out of our bumper. Now we're going to put our foam back in our pillar. Not that I'm a fan, I don't like this stuff, but the factory put it in there, so I'm putting it back. The first is the rigid foam that goes in that little spacer that we had removed and replaced. I found a long mixing nozzle. There's a hole in the outside of this pillar that allows me direct access all the way through to get to the back side of that. And we just pump it in there and slowly pull the thing out of there and hopefully we don't end up with any of it on our carpet. That's why I have the paper there. Now we need to install the foam that goes around the outside edge. The Ronald McDonald hair when we pulled it apart. That's a little more flexible. And we can watch that little drip expand and see why I put paper down there. 
Now, if you don't happen to have a long mixing nozzle to get all the way through these holes, you can use a piece of rubber hose on there, but you will end up having to throw it away when you're done because it clogs up the hose. Or if you happen to be independently wealthy or maybe have a trust fund, you can use some steel tubing. Both work. So you can see the holes that I used to get it in there. And now we can cover it up with our kick panel. Snap it in there. Put our door gasket back on. Turn our sill plate around and clip that in. Just use the bumper installation tool for that. We got our side panel for our dash. Clip that in there. Open the glove box up just to make sure it was all the way clipped in there. And our seat belts are back. From, you guessed it, my airbags. I found one of those fancy razor blades. It's actually sharp and has a handle attached to it. Next thing you know, I'm going to be using steel tubing for my pillar foam installation. Open up our package and see if FedEx managed to destroy it. The seatbelt looks okay. How about our module? Looks like it has all of its ears. I think the shipping was a success. So we'll install our seatbelt first. Bolt the bottom of it in. And bolt the top in. And plug it in. Pull our little plastic lock out of there. And let it retract. And we can install our top. I can feed the belt through the upper B-pillar trim. Get the buckle through there. Slide the tabs up underneath the headliner. And clip it in. Pull our door gasket out of here. Make sure it's all the way in. Clip in the tabs on the bottom. And push our door gaskets back in. And clip the bottom trim in. This one goes over the door gaskets, but under the sill plates. Lift up the front of the sill plate. Put our sill plates back down. And we can attach the bottom of the seat belt to our seat. And put our little cover in there. Just slide it down into place. Now we can put our module in. Plug it in. A lot easier to get to the plugs when it's not attached. And set it up on its little perch and start our bolts by hand. And then tighten them down to manufacturer specs. The electric ratchet identifies as a torque wrench. And we can put our little side covers on the console. We just clip in. The driver's side's a little bit easier than the passenger side. And the reason the passenger side is so difficult is because I'm lazy and I don't want to take the little hush panel off the bottom of the dash. So you gotta kind of squeeze it up here and get that first clip in there. And then once you get that one in, all the rest of them clip in there. To me, I'd rather struggle with that one clip than pull that hush panel down. Just a matter of preference. Now we're gonna do a little housekeeping because occasionally I do clean when it actually matters. And our seat's out, so we might as well clean underneath it. Make it easy on the detailing gnome. But you can be sure that I'm not vacuuming the rest of the car. That's above my pay grade. So to replace our seat airbag and our seat cover and the cushion was gonna be about $800 new from the dealer, plus all that pesky labor. So instead, I found a used seat. It had one little catch. It was in Atlanta, Georgia. But since I was going down there anyway, it made sense to stop by and pick it up. I wanna say this was like 300 bucks. And that's where I got my wheel from too. So. 
let's throw our seat in, ready to go, plug and play. Don't have to waste our time changing over seat covers and everything else, because that's not really a fun job. Wish they had centered the seat over the tracks. Perhaps they should have watched some of my videos. That's a handy tip I share quite a bit. Would have made that a little easier. We'll reconnect our dozen or so connectors that are under here. Move the seat around and get it to fall down on its little alignment. Works. That's a good thing. Now we can bolt the back of our seat down. And move our seat back so we can get the bolts in the front. Bend our bolts down. Then we can put our little caps over it. And put our seat forward again. That way we can get to our seat belt. Junk car just cut our old one out of here, so we need to take it out. Lost the remainder of it in the pile. And slide our original in there. Put our little cover back down. Move our seat back. And there's some scratches on this button, so we're just going to pop it off of there. Just a little wiggle and pull. Get the pick behind it, and it comes off of there. Stick one off our original seat. We'll clip it on there. Just pushes on. And now we'll put our headrest in. Just slides in. But the seat's too far up, so it's not clearing the headliner. We'll just tilt it back a little bit, slide it in there, go all the way down and make sure it stays. Now we're going to check and make sure we have no airbag light. And things are not looking good. I'm not happy. So I guess I jumped the gun. It's not easy plug and play like it should be. Honda programmed the VIN number into the weight sensors on the bottom of the seat. So I have two choices. I can either have those sensors in our used seat programmed so that the VIN number matches and it's happy, or I can just swap out the bottom of our seat and put our old weight sensors in there, which is probably what I'm gonna do because it's cheaper and faster. I could probably do that in about a half an hour instead of waiting for somebody to come out and program it because my scanner won't. So, and I have to pay somebody to program it and I'm cheap. So I think we're just gonna switch out our seat bottom and put it all back together, call it a day. So maybe that'll get rid of our airbag light. Those are the only two codes that were in there. So everything else should be good. And as soon as we do that, our light should be out and we should have no more dash emojis. So let's finish putting the rest of it back together. Okay, if you left me a comment asking why I didn't put any cavity wax in the doors, you can go ahead and erase it. Uh, I didn't do it because I didn't want to pull the water barrier down on the inside and there's plenty of holes on the outside for me to get to. So I'm just gonna put a little wax in the bottom of this door actually the bottom of both doors and the bottom edge of that front fender so that this side of the car will not rust out. And those sneaky sea turtles got all of our old plastic and never set off the traps, so we're gonna lay some more traps for them. Maybe the two-sided tape will entice them to stay around a little longer. Stick our molding on there, flip it in, and then make sure our two-sided tape is adhered to the door. Do the same thing with the back molding. And we did glue the broken tab that was on the front of that back on there. Now we're back on the lift. We have some of the mechanical parts that we didn't change before because I didn't have them. 
and we didn't need it to drive it. We'll put our sway bar link in there. Brand new link from Honda with our old nuts because Honda doesn't give you those. Now we can break our jam nut loose on our tie rod end. We're going to change both of our tie rod ends. A little tap, 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 roo. And spin it onto there. Counting the turns so we can hopefully get it back where it was. Using all OE parts, we might even get that alignment dead on. So we'll hold the inner tie rod in, spin the jam nut off of there. Pull a little spring clamp off the boot. Can't get away from those spring clamps no matter how I try. We we'll jam a screwdriver and the clamp on the inside. And just twist it and it'll open it up. Then we can pull the boot off of the rack. And then pull the boot off the tie rod end. That one seemed to like it on there. So we got our little wrench end on the inner tie rod end. Put it into the tool and break it free. Doesn't take much on these. Spin it out of there. And that's why we're changing it. It's not supposed to have that adjustment in there. So Honda didn't put any Loctite in here, but I don't trust these things, so I'm going to put a little in there for good measure. And to make life difficult for the next guy. So you can pretty much spin it all the way on there. Put our little wrench end in there. And put our tie rod end tool on there and tighten it down. If you're looking for one of these inner tie rod end tools, they're available in my Amazon store. And slide our boot back on there. Clips into the groove on the tie rod end. And we can put our spring clamp back on. Yay! Now we have to squeeze the clamp on the inside. So just have a pair of side cutters. Crimp it down there. Now we'll put our jam nut on there. I'll we'll put a little mechanics glitter on here just to make sure this doesn't freeze up on there. The alignment guy will thank me for it in the future. Unless he gets it all over his hands, then he's gonna be cursing me. Spin our new tie rod on here. We're going to go the same number of turns and see how close our alignment gets. We're still going to take it for an alignment, but I'd rather not tear up the brand new tire if we don't have to on the way there. Back in our knuckle, bolt it in, and put our cotter pin in there. Now we can spin our jam nut on there, and here begins the mess with the mechanic glitter. We use our adjustable hammer to tighten it down because I'm too lazy to find the right wrench. We got a little stalactite from our pillar foam. Pull that out of there. And then we're going to cavity wax the inside of this little pillar that we replaced. We want to make sure that the inside of our seams where it's going to be bare metal because there's no way for us to paint that. We want to make sure it's all covered and it's never going to rust. And if you can never remember the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite, just remember that a stalactite has to hold on tight, so it's the one that drips down from up above. Bet you never thought you'd be getting geology tips on this channel. There's a couple different panels in there, so we're going to make sure we get on all sides of them. We'll use the holes in the bottom, a little more on the top, and we'll put all of our plugs back in there. We can put our little molding on the bottom of the fender. This one's actually reasonably priced. 
and it's five bucks. About what that molding should cost. I'll put our wheel liner in. This was left over from my 2022. I got the wrong one and I never returned it, so I had no choice but to buy one of these built. Between that and the fender bracket, it was like a hundred dollars. Our bolts in the bottom. Okay, Honda, what the heck? If you're ever wondering why I save clips so often and put so much effort in not breaking them, well, here's a perfect example. These little clips for our closeout panel under the hood, 77 cents, reasonable. Probably could break them, wouldn't really break the bank. However, this tiny little one, which is like a 10th the size, is 10 times the price, $7. Yes, $7 for this tiny little clip that goes right there. I broke one, seven bucks. And then I was missing other ones I stole from my other RDXs. So I had to buy six of these and still wasn't the cost of one of these. Ridiculous. Let's install our 70 cent ones. Work our way up to the ritzy ones. Oh, I have an extra. Why didn't you clean that? I took this piece off so that we could paint up here. We painted the piece all the way up. Somebody's been here before and this quarter's been painted. This was just covering up the holes because it was sitting outside in the rain. I don't want to take that other clip out because if I break it, there's another seven bucks. And I have to wait for Honda to get me another one. See if we can do this. Maybe I should put it in the right spot. Which one I bet I'm gonna break this. See if that was a good idea or not. I guess so. Not getting another seven dollars out of me, Honda. So the weight sensors that need to be programmed in the bottom of the seat is what's causing our airbag light to stay on because the codes are set. So I could change everything down there, put all our originals back in, and it'll be just fine. But after a little research, meaning I took the other seat apart, it's gonna be a lot easier just to take our parts that we need off of this one and repair our old seat. Uh, the back comes off a lot easier than the whole bottom piece. So we're just gonna change our seat cushion our side airbag and the back piece back here because our used one had a couple nicks on it and I was debating on whether or not to change it anyway. So now we have our opportunity to go ahead and change it. So we're just gonna strip down this seat and throw it on our other one that I already took apart. So I'll show you how this one comes apart and how it goes back together. Of course, we're also changing the seat cover too. I just forgot to mention it before. So now we're gonna disconnect the wiring harness for our airbag and unclip our seat cover for the back. Now we can unbolt it and a little wiggle and pull and our seat back comes off. We've got some more airbag wires to unclip. 
and untangle. And we'll disconnect our fan for our ventilated seats. And we can start on clipping our seat cover from the seat frame. Just some hooks that hook around the metal frame. If you get a pick behind it, it makes it a little easier to unclip them. Reach in there and release the tabs to get our wiring harness loose. We got a couple of Christmas trees in here. Pop those out of there. We're going to squeeze our impact in here so we can unbolt our airbag. There's two nuts on the inside. And the cover is trapped underneath it, so you have to pull the airbag out first. Set that off to the side. And we can unclip some more wiring harnesses. Now we have to remove our headrest locks. There's a couple tabs that you push in to go through the seat frame, and they just lift out of there. There is a right and a left, and our seat cover comes off. So we got our original seat frame. We're going to put our cover back on. Tuck it all in there. Then we're going to put our airbag in there and clip the seat cover to our seat frame all across the back. But unfortunately, my camera didn't want to record that. So instead, we're just going to put the harness in for the airbag on the bottom of the seat. So clearly, I know we have trust issues. I did put an airbag in there. And we got to tuck this one back underneath there. Now we'll put our back on there. There's a tab at the top edge, which since it's upside down is actually the bottom edge. So you slide that in and push it onto the little push pins, the plastic clips. And we'll put our screws in there to hold it in. And pull the bottom cover down and stretch the little elastic bands and clip them in. Get the little springs on the bottom of the seat. We're going to put our headrest locks in here. Just slide right in. It did give that reassuring click that it was in there, but apparently I didn't believe it. So we're going to smash it on there. I'm going to put the other one in. Got the seat cover tucked in there. You got to get it centered just right because there's a couple pieces of metal that they go through, and the locking tab is on the bottom one. Now I have to change the button that I had already changed earlier when I thought I was using the other seat. And now our seat's back in the car. I don't think you need to see how to do it again since we already did it once. And our airbag light is off. We have no codes. We're good to go. Nope, we're not done with two-sided tape yet. We gotta stick our door moldings on here. They have clips on them as well. But you can't be too secure. Line up all of our clips. Push it on the door. And if you're wondering why I didn't just put these moldings on when I put the other ones on, I had given these moldings to the two-sided tape gnome, and he was retaping them for me. One of the most valuable gnomes I have. Because it's one of the worst jobs. Feel the backing off of our front molding. Line up our tabs. Stick it on there. And now we need to make our car somewhat legal. The front windshield is tinted, so we need to pull the tint off of here, because if I take it for the state of Illinois inspection, uh, they will remove it for me if I do not remove it myself. So we spray a little window cleaner on there. Uh, water works just as well. 
and we're gonna put a little plastic over it and let it bake in the sun. Now this video was filmed a little while ago when it was actually warm in Chicago, not negative two. So it kind of steams it off of there. So it's been sitting out in the sun. We're gonna peel our plastic off of here and start pulling our tint off. Fun fact, this car came from Indianapolis. I also bought a Lexus at one time from Indianapolis that also had a tinted windshield. These are the only two cars I've ever purchased with tinted windshields, and they both came from Indianapolis. Not sure what's going on down there. So we're just going to keep spraying it as we go. Kind of releases the glue and helps us pull it off. This tint's not super old, so it does come off pretty easy. It's the stuff that's been on there for a while that makes a big mess. And to be completely honest, if I didn't have to take it for the inspection, I probably wouldn't have taken the tint off of here. It really didn't make a difference at night. You could still see out of it, and it made it look much better from the outside. Our alignment was done. Our millimeter wave radar was recalibrated, so we can put our emblem back on our grill. Just line it up and snap it on. $700 worth of emblem. Now we can put our name plates on so that everybody knows we bought the sporty edition. We have our factory molding alignment system on there. Before I took the old name plates off, I put the tape on there, I measured everything, I wrote the measurements on the tape, and then I snapped a picture. Because normally I take the little template off and stick it to the inside of the window somewhere, but I knew this thing was going to be apart for a while while I waited for the hood, which did not have taking, I think, five weeks to get. Now that it's time to put our moldings back on, all I had to do was look at the picture, use my measurements to make up my new templates, stick them on the fender, and line up our nameplates. Now we can transfer our alignment system to the other side. Pull the backing off our two-sided tape. Not sure why I chose to use the original nameplate for this side. This one actually came from the other side. Our new one ended up on that one. Doesn't really matter, they're both the same. Stick it on there and push it on. Make sure we don't push too hard, we want to bend that fender. Just give it a little polish. And pull off our factory alignment system. Now we need to do an oil change. Well, we don't actually need to do an oil change, but I like to do an oil change before it's time to get rid of the car. I did run it around, took it for the alignment, all the inspections and everything else, put a few miles on it because whoever had it before me had just had the oil changed before they decided to uh, run into a pole. So we'll pull this little shield down. It hides our oil drain plug and our oil filter. Drained all the oil so we can put the plug back in. Put some Loctite on it and tighten it down to 6,000 foot-pounds and send it to Jiffy Lube for payback. We got our oil filter wrench and loosen up our oil filter, which was tightened down by Hercules. Apparently he was done tightening all the door handle caps down for the day or let him tighten the oil filters. Now we can pull our cleverly disguised Fram filter out of here. Yep, that's right. That was a OE Honda oil filter. You'll never guess who makes the OE filters for Honda. But I guess when it's blue instead of orange, it's acceptable. So now I'm just going to throw everything out the window and screw a white one on there. Just to equally offend everyone. And if you're not offended by the type of oil filter that I use, congratulations. You're a normal person. Put our little locks in there, turn them 90 degrees and they lock in there. I'm never quite sure if they're totally engaged, so we're going to recheck them all. Now we can dump our oil back in here. Screw our cap back on there. And do a little housekeeping. The detailing gnome has worked his magic, so our RDX is completely finished. And just to verify that there are no issues with the car, I took it on a little road trip, the pizza girl and I. 
We went down to Orlando, Florida. So 2,500 miles, no issues whatsoever. We even tested at high speeds. Of course, we did those high speed tests in Mexico. The trip originally wasn't for work, but I never stopped working. So while I was down there, I picked up some parts for another build of mine and dropped off some parts that I had sold. And look at that, our engine is clean. It's almost like I didn't need to clean the parts as I was putting them on because they all get cleaned at the end. Even the interior. Of course, underneath the passenger seat's a lot cleaner than the rest of it, I guess. A lot of you have asked why this thing was totaled when the damage didn't seem to be that bad. And then damage wasn't that bad. Financially, it was not a total loss. The reason they totaled it was that long wait for the hood. If they have rental car coverage, the insurance company doesn't want to pay a rental car while they're waiting for the parts, so they just total it out and take the loss. That was the case with this one and a lot of other cars that should have been rebuildable since 2020. Now this is normally the part of the build where we play everyone's favorite game and find out once and for all if our build truly is finished. Unfortunately, we have a little problem and we can't play what's in my console. So after I get the car safety tested, I can take it for the state of Illinois inspection. And after the state of Illinois inspection, it takes six to eight weeks for me to get a title. Well, during that time, I like to drive the car around and make sure that everything is good so that when I get the title back, it's ready to sell. Unfortunately, I made a huge mistake. I let the pizza girl drive it. Uh, so I no longer have an RDX to sell. I do have a nice GMC terrain that I got on trade. Pretty sure I got a raw deal there. But if you were looking forward to buying the RDX, it will be available. Uh, I just have to find something else that the pizza girl wants to take from me even more than the RDX. So when I find that vehicle, it will be up for sale and I'll let you know. So thanks for watching and I will see you when I have something else to rebuild that hopefully I can sell.